to invite first uh, Kison. Just in a few words, if you could say, just in bullet points, what are the major features of your sustainable solution? Uh, from my perspective, I think you know, you've got a good product, you've got a good technology, and you've got a good complete system solution. How to realize that, get it landed with a good business model, and attract the investors to come with you. That is most important to us. So that is a complete solution for BYD, for MBE, for Green Hedge. We're going to provide to the world to solve the energy issues. Yes, and I think that uh, it would be interesting uh, also involved in our discussion, the guests later, yes? So at the beginning, I would like to first uh, listen to the partners of uh, BYD because you are doing already the business. So I would like to ask you just, guys, please tell us openly, why do you think that this solution by BYD is the best one? Which markets, in your opinion, would you like to address? Yes. And uh, why did you choose uh, BYD as a partner? Um, I think why BYD as a partner is, is an easy question for us because I think there are three things that stand out. We've been doing project development for over 20 years now, and um, we've learned a few things. The first one is that the more people you have involved in a project, the more unwieldy and complicated it, it becomes. And what we really like about BYD is that they do both the solo side and the storage side. And on the storage side, they're really completely integrated. They're not just um, a provider of battery cells, but they do the battery cells, the battery management system, the control system in one house. And that's really extremely rare. In, in the market, you still see a lot of different companies um, that you have to put together. And BYD is really unique in having all this um, in-house. The second reason is um, this is a new area for many investors to, to finance. So um, you can have the best technology, but you have to convince banks and you have to invest, uh, convince investors that it really works. So it really makes a difference that you are a big, profitable company and you can provide a warranty for this. We had a discussion with a bank um, earlier today and they said exactly the same thing. They don't really want to find um, the, the really clever inventor that has the best product in the market because um, if things go wrong, they will not be around to fix it. And BYD is really, um, with 180,000 staff, uh, with such a big company, is the best partner to provide um, a warranty. And the third reason what we like about BYD is that they are very long-term in their thinking. When you look at um, solar, which other company provides products for 50 years? If you look at storage, um, lots of companies provide battery systems for five years or 10 years. Uh, BYD have always said, well, it's the longevity that makes a difference. 10,000 cycles is really leading the market. 20 years of having a battery. And then they also think about the recycling aspect at the end of it. And we see this as really not just a quick profit, but a long-term sustainable business model. Um, and you need to have this kind of really long-term thinking. And that's what we really like about BYD, but NBE as well. And uh, uh, Lin Mo Yang, so you are a visionary person, yeah, like like a chairman of uh, of BYD. Was it a reason that you joined forces together? We chose BYD. We chose BYD. At we didn't not BYD. In the very beginning, BYD is not the say the prefer. The preference of uh, MBE. Uh, we chose BYD. Is Ximenzi recommended? Is So it was recommended by Siemens and GE. They told me, they told us, in this world, there is a Chinese company that is the best in the world, BYD. Okay, they told me, they told MBE, there is a company in the road from China. They are very good at on the battery storage and other products as well, of course. Continue下去, 呃, 所有的与会人员 
都会感觉很叹服 BYD 现在所掌握的技术。Okay, so during the technical meeting between NB and BMW, during the technical meeting between NB and the Thyssen Group, the steel company from Germany, and the technical consultants from BYD participate this meeting. They are convinced by the technology from BYD. 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 如果产品没有量，那么它也不会得到很好的推广和应用。Okay, so if there is no production capacity for the best technology, it can it can it cannot be expanded and applied to the market. 我建议大家像我一样，时常的到 BYD 去参观一下。I would like to suggest of us to take a visit to BYD regularly. BYD 的电池生产线一定会震撼到你。You are being impressed by the production line of BYD's battery. 还有就是 BYD 的诚信和 BYD 的 open. And the open of BYD and also the loyalty of BYD. 我们需要这样的合作伙伴，所以我们选择 BYD. We need this kind of partner. That's why we choose them. Thank you so much. 非常感谢。啊 ，maybe before Alexis.、Um, Giving you the floor. Maybe I would like to ask uh, Gobin. Huh. Gobin, uh, because uh, let's say, of course, we have solar panels which can um, stand for 50 years, but a、uh, very important element of the solution is the storage. And I would like to ask you uh, from you know, the, one of the biggest storage and with the longest history storage producers, what will be the future of storage solutions in BUID? How would you go and would you help, you know, the whole company with your solutions?、Mm, yeah, this is a really big question.、Mm -hmm. So,、um, first of all, for 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 BYD store business, we、I、think about the technology itself. I mean, the market will be the the first consideration we are、uh, taking care of, because battery is not new things. Back to A lot of years, even electric vehicle is not invited like a、uh, recent ten or twenty years. So,、um, but why we continue、uh, um, working on the battery technology? Because the, there's so many application for the world, right? Smaller to the、uh, cell phones, bigger to the、uh, utility scale systems. You see, every place we have potential、uh, capability to use the battery.、Mm -hmm. um, so,、um, generally speaking, for us. Look in the market to define the application and the value of the application. Then we can follow this process to define the product for either residential or commercial or utility scale. Then we try to find the right partner、uh, who can install our system, who can、um, uh, sell our system, who can use our system. Then we create some business model, create business uh, uh, opportunity for all of the uh, partner, uh, including Beauty as well. And、uh, when it comes to your roadmap in terms of the cost of batteries and also longevity,、uh, the lifetime of the of the batteries, what are the the developments?、Uh, how do you see the future from this perspective? Because I think it's so important when we will be, you know, scaling up、okay. of the energy and storage solutions.、Um, as we know,、um, BYD battery capacity manufacturers already ten gigawatt hours. For my opinion. Uh, the cost for the battery itself is so、uh, I will be improved continuous for sure. Majorly will come from the uh, uh, energy density. So it means the same process to build the battery cell, but、uh, as a result you get a larger ampere hours. Then you, you get the equivalent lower and、uh, kilowatt hours price because the voltage is same. And uh, uh, even you see in the market, there's a lot of battery technologies, right? We still insist to use lithium-ion phosphate battery. Even so, there's a li little bit of、uh, disadvantage compared to LM, LMC, AMLC battery, with、mm -hmm. uh, magnesium cobalt,、uh, magnesium uh, element. They have a little bit higher energy density、uh, because they have higher 
voltage for 3.7, we are 3.2. So even we make the same rolling, same ampere hours of the battery, so the energy, uh, watt hours is lower in the same size. But uh, we do see uh, the reliability and the uh, um, safety is really important, especially we use the batteries for public transportation. Uh, you can imagine like 40 people sitting in the bus full of a battery, which is 300 or uh, even mo more than uh, like a 400 kilowatt hours really. So if the safety we cannot make guarantees, <coughs> then this, this cannot extend, uh, the, uh, expand this business as this way. Storage system as well. You see like a solar panel reach 50 years uh, um, uh, lifetime. The storage is helping the storage uh, panels or even wind uh, system to um, generate the power to the utilities. So um, longer lifetime means you can get a better payback, right? So we, that's why we continue for this, this way. And uh, uh, so the, for the real applications, we uh, research the market as well to define different uh, configuration of the system. Then especially like the coolings, like the heating, yeah, to protect the battery, make the battery system operate as long as possible and uh, make the system operate well, yeah. And uh, because, you know, now we have um, the clean tech disruption. So it's not only about energy, it's a lot about transportation. And BYD uh, last year was the biggest producer of electric cars, 64,000, I think, uh, cars uh, last year produced by BYD. And uh, will you have enough capacity, you know, because mm -hmm. I assume that uh, electric cars will boom incredibly. Will you have enough ca capacity? How do you prepare the company, you know, to this boom, let's say, not only in the energy mm. um, business, but also in the transportation? Yeah, um, so you see, that's why we are increasing the, even we already have 10 gigawatt hours capacity uh, end of 2015. And uh, um, this year, the next year, we are also increasing the capacity. I think we just uh, we will build another 10 gigawatt hours in Qinghai uh, province in China. So that will increase our capabilities. And uh, um, for the continuous growing of the market, especially for the electric vehicles, so this is really important, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and even for the technology, so there's some additional um, selection of the electric ba battery technology. You see, compared to other uh, technology, some material have some limitation global-wide. Right, like a uh, uh, cobalt, uh, they have some limitation for the supplement. But uh, our technology, LFP battery, is uh, how do you say? The supplement is strong enough mm -hmm. to make its continuous op uh, operations. Yeah. Okay, maybe now uh, Alexis. So you you had uh, the background from from the financials, from HSBC. Then you are working for one of the biggest project uh, developers. Now you are working with the royal family um, in Malaysia. You are working also with a lot of governments, especially in the emerging markets. So Niels already covered a bit the reason why this solution is great for the mature markets, especially when we are um, getting rid of the subsidies. But I think that uh, even more exciting market for the energy storage solution together with solar is in the emerging markets. What do you think, uh, Alexis? Is it the right time now for this? Well, of course, what happened before was that you have solar. Now storage is going mainstream. So what is the good news for the new countries is that now you can package a full solution that was not possible before. I think that the, 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 the key element here is to learn a process. The business model is basis. You need to create a business model, but that you can scale very rapidly because I think that the, the, what is the ultimate purpose? We need to reduce the CO2 emission. So we, time is a constraint. And, 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 and that's what we really need to refocus. And, and uh, in a way, I'm, I'm happy for you because for BYD, I, I'm sad because we need at least 500 BYD in the country, in the world, because we need to, to go at, at such speed. I, I'm working with governments on the fast track because Everything takes forever. Every new country, the learning curve is tremendous. Uh, when, when you see new countries going mainstream in solar, at the beginning, it'll, the two years are waste most, most of the time, and it's very sad to see that. And one other thing is, for example, I give an example. Each country has a particularly 
unique resource on renewables. We were talking about solar and wind, but hydro is important, biomass. You can work on the load with biomass and, sorry, with um, geothermal and hydro. Latin America is full of water, it's a hydro place, so you need less storage. So what will happen now is that the demand will, and, and currently we are seeing that, is two or three times more than we, what you can currently produce. So match both will be difficult. And a smart way in emerging countries to store is, first you want to work on where the electricity price is very expensive, in islands, for example. Second, you want to replace, as of today, diesel equipment, because it's a very, very silly thing, still having cities powered by diesel. And against diesel, you can sell your battery three times the price you're selling now, and, and you will beat them. And uh, the third major thing will be that in two years from now, this will be a different discussion because your price will be half than it's now. So you are an early adopter, so the, the new countries can leapfrog and go to a very good solution in both renewable, well, both storage and solar. And we will see that more and more. And uh, again, I, I think that we need much more players in that arena. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe because uh, we are quite running out of time, I would like to just ask you for the recommendation. Because uh, I think that uh, it's very interesting, really, business model, actually, that we are discussing today. But uh, we need more marketing and awareness, I think, about this business model. What are the advantages for the emerging markets, also for the mature markets, in terms of technical help to the, to the grid, but also um, in terms of replacing even the, the current, uh, the current um, energies? Because we are speaking, actually, about the revolution. Yeah? So it's not only about energy, it's not only about um, transportation, it's just the, the, the full revolution, society revolution. So, in your opinion, guys, how would you imagine that we should market this solution? Uh, what would be your advice also to BYD? Uh, how do they, should they uh, try to persuade other actors to enter with, um, uh, to the solar plus storage solution? Maybe I will ask first uh, Niels, then I will ask Alexis, and they will ask uh, uh, Lin Mo Yang, who, is, uh, who said that he's great in marketing, of course. <laughs> it, it's really great to hear from Alexis that you've had similar experience to us. Um, I think you're right that the adoption very often stops in a new market because either you've got customers that say, this sounds too great to be true, and where is the project that I can see for myself if it works? So you never really get to the first project because everyone wants to see the first project. And the second reason is that sometimes governments are a bit too long-term and they want to make sure they don't pick the wrong project. Um, and so they think we need to solve it all in, in one go. We need to address heat and transport and, and future technologies and residential and so on. And, and then it gets so, so complicated that you never get off the ground. And I think the only way to, to cut through this is that... Um, combination of the people sitting here on the panel push for some pilot projects as demonstration objects um, and uh, let people see that it works and that, that we develop a plan of how it could all work long term and make sure that we don't block any doors to the future but at the same time that the, the first projects are perhaps not the ideal scenario that we want but it's a starting point and then you can add on and add on. That basically, when you do a project, you've got the next two or three horizons or scenarios in your mind, but you don't do that in step one, because if you want to do everything at once, you'll never get to do anything. Alexis. Well, uh, funny enough, uh, there is a lot of money in the world, a lot of liquidity, and everybody claiming that they want to invest in renewables. But, you know, I'm always asking, where is the money? And uh, it's very difficult to see it out there. So here is where governments take, take a key role. Initially, when you have a, 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 new, a new country, what you need is first the government making the examples exactly I share with you, the vision. You need, you need a track record in each of the country at the beginning, and you need a very fast. So you need to deploy small projects initially held by the government. So why? Because when you go to a local bank in a country, the local bank will say, I will not finance that. I don't know nothing about it. So if the government at the beginning facilitate through green banks or any kind of different support mechanisms, small projects, because the strat the, we don't want to go huge utility. I've been in many tenders and it takes four years. 
and it's a very, very, very silly thing. So you want to go in two, three months, start developing and showing. So what you do is the government start financing. They have at the beginning, you have a leading case. Banks see that leading case. And the problem here is that it's on the project side. The money side is there, so you don't have an issue. But everybody's always saying, well, we need to be sure that the project will, will, will see the light. So, so what we need is to professionalize even more the project side. Because the money is not a problem. The problem is the project. So you need to put a lot of effort on the greenfield and brownfield and, and, and really promote the guys who really have the experience. So we need to focus a lot on the project side. Okay, that's been addressed just now. Uh, the storage is one of the most important key points for the energy revolution. Either it is the conventional energy or about the renewable energy, that is to surround us around the battery storage, the most important key point over there. Uh, NBE, uh, so from the financial point of view, as an investor, MB would like to uh, share with us, doesn't matter Either you start from the small project to the big one, or start from the big project to the smaller one. And uh, otherwise, you get very good due diligence for the project. But the most important is, how can you get the money back? Uh, uh, your whether your proposal, your technical proposal, can be accepted by the government, it will depend on whether your proposal is really contribute to the whole society. Here I would like to share one of my experience. We every in the very beginning of the year, we're going to get the task for each department of the government and what, the, what is their goal to be reached in the same year. You'll be very clear to see the task of the government, what they are going to do in the same year. So you don't need to be able to make them. You are Therefore, you don't need to comply with that. What you need to do is just to have your proposal or to have your plan to meet the requirement asked by the government. Actually, you are support this program. Uh, still, Still that sentence. The future is happening. Today. We hope we can get we can obtain the fruit fruit on the renewable energy way. Don't wait, just do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, do we have any questions uh, from the audience, actually, to our speakers, both from BUID and also their partners and uh, to Alexis? Do we have any courageous? There is one courageous person. Thank you. No, it's working. 
Thank you for your great presentation. Um, just a question to most of you up there. You presented a financial case for uh, large solar farm projects and the, battery, the benefits of battery storage in containerized compartments. Um, can you see a way forward for social housing projects, battery storage in the UK, um, where investors will want to invest on this to stop fuel poverty, working with local authorities? Have you got any financial case to hand that you can share with us? to show the benefits to investors so they can get a return on investment in the future. Alexis, kindly pass the microphone on to me because I think that's a really, really important question. Um, I mean, first of all, we're not proposing containerized solutions because um, we think this is long term. It has to look long term. So we propose to put the storage systems in most circumstances in a proper building which we call the energy barn, um, and it would just fit in with the, the visual surrounding. Um, but that's not your question, that's just a point of clarification. Um, we had a good look at the, at the business case for um, social housing and just residential units. The, the bit that's missing at the moment is that um, we don't have smart meters that measure really when exactly people use the electricity that you could see the benefits of um, shifting the demand away from periods of high demand and, and high charges for network usage. Um, in principle, the business case would be the same as the one that I've shown you, but the moment we've got smart metering and smarter tariffs for people, that basically people don't just pay an average price, no matter what they do, that will be the point when there are really interesting business cases. Let, let me tell you something that it probably is important. There was a couple of studies that where you should put storage at the main central generation, at a community level or a residential level. And going to your point, most of the studies, in order to maximize the storage, you do it at a community level because it was proved that is where you maximize the use of battery. So that is probably a, and also an important thing to keep in mind. So okay. let's... Yeah. I mean, uh, I can understand your point there, but in most scenarios for a social housing program where you have um, social housing tenants, where it can benefit them storing, if they're out in the daytime and storing that energy during the daytime and then using it in the evening, that you would really have to do something on a property by property basis. Uh, as you know, in the UK, we're restricted for space in most areas, so to put something in where it will serve a community of say 100 houses or 200 houses at a time may not be viable. Um, but moving forward, I mean, I'll be really interested to see the financial case for say large scale social housing programs, how the numbers add up. Um, as you said earlier, it's not about return on investment anymore, it's about the savings. And savings is what we need to be looking at for the future. And is that something that you're all in, in agreement with? Well, I have the microphone now because if I hand it to you, you will be. But, but probably I will. I will summarize that that probably we, we don't clarify something about the twenty nine dollars per megawatt uh, is pure finance fi financing scheme. So what you're saying is that uh, on the financial side, what we are saying is that the goal is to reduce the cost of capital and the finance. So when when you can achieve that, is doable. What we are seeing now some projects in renewables that they have a uh, forty years. A hydro project in Canada is 40 years. So the long term of the financing is a key element on what you're saying. If you're talking about 10 years, 20 or 30, now they are being, the loans are evolving. So we are doing 25 years loan. So at the moment that I'm talking about a 25 years loan with a very low rate, about three to 4%, everything's doable. Because uh, that would be, that is one of the main components behind the $29. Is the final investor, he's comfortable with that low return. It's a very long-term finance, and it has a very low rate. When you combine those three, and now you, can, you, you get an interesting return, but imagine in one year or two, it would be tremendous. Mm -hmm. And financing is evolving in that direction. That's what we need, because it's all about money. Technology is there. It's, everything is a commodity, the battery, the module, the better. Even the project will become a commodity, but, but it's about how the money, how, how you deal with that, 
and the, and, and the, the governments there with that. Once we solve that, you can scale in a couple of years globally. And I hope I, I, I went a little bit beyond your question. But. Thank you. Okay, so uh, because uh, let's say our friends who are preparing the dinner are ringing the bell, so I would suggest, uh, suggest that uh, we skip uh, the other questions. And, for, and I'm sure the speakers and also the BYD team will respond to any questions you might have during the, during the dinner later, uh, during the networking uh, moments. And I'm also sure that uh, Mr. Lin Mo Yang uh, will be uh, meeting people who would like to receive some investments from him. <laughs> And uh, what I noticed uh, very interesting uh, was today, what we discussed, that it's so important to have the real projects to demonstrate that it actually works. So now it's a very important moment, actually. There is a ceremony of signing of MOU for this kind of projects.